congrats on all your success, man. Thank I continue you. to watch him. I live through you, man. I wish I could still be playing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, I wish you was my point guard, man. I wish I could have came off a few pick and rolls with you, man. Man, sometimes I think I, you know, I retired too early, but you never know. You just never know when that time comes. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Right. It just you never prepared to say goodbye, bro. That's for sure. Thanks. What up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Players Podcast presented to you by the Euro League Players Association. I'm your host, Kyle Hines. Today, we got a very special guest, um, literally a a living legend, um, both on and off the basketball court. Um, I mean, this guy has accomplished, you know, so much. Um, He's literally held down a whole entire country, put a country on his back, um, you know, throughout, you know, throughout basketball in general, man. He's, 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 He's done so much. Um, and even now, I mean, he's the general manager of the Puerto Rican national team. He's a, uh, an international reggaeton music star, um, <laughs> NBA vet, man. The resume can go on and on. My guy, um, you know, one of my favorite players to watch, um, Carlos Royal. Carlos, man, how's everything? Good, man. Thank you for having me, man. Pleasure to be here, brother. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, man. Now we're gonna we're gonna jump right into it. Like I said, man, we you know you're you're a busy guy. I got a busy schedule. Got a lot going on. So we're gonna get right into it. And I want to start off in the beginning, man. You know, Puerto Rico. Um, you know, is for those that don't know. I mean, it's a you know small island. Um, you know, how did you get your start? You know, playing basketball there. Where did the love kind of come from? Kind of take us through the beginning a little bit. Man, my pops, man, you know, from an early age, I'm a twin brother for a lot of people that don't know. Uh, And, you know, my pops, you know, taught us the game from an early age. I guess he wanted to, to, you know, live through uh, our eyes, you know, his his, uh, basketball dreams, you know. Um, And we just learned from an early age, you know, watching the, you know, Bad Boy Pistons and watching Magic and and the Lakers and just, um, you know, fell in love with the game at an early age in Puerto Rico, you know, back then there was no internet. You just watched the games on, you know, on the TV and whenever they came up. So, uh, but it, you know, I just fell in love with the game. I was passionate about it. You know, I was, I was one of those kids that, you know, I was every day on, you know, in the park playing with my boys and my dad training us, you know, after, after work every afternoon. So just fell in love early, man. It was, it was uh, fun days for sure. Growing up, who was the better twin? You or your brother? Um, Man, I, I, you know, I wouldn't say I'm up on that record, but uh, <laughs> as far as one on ones, but he was a way better shooter than me. I had to, you know, I had really? to learn. Yeah, I remember my pops, you know, uh, just you know, telling me, you know, look at your your brother's form, you know, how yeah. he releases his elbow straight. But you know, I was, I think I was more more passionate about the game. You know, I was more mm. into just you know, watching the NBA games, and then right after the game, I was in you know the backyard shooting and working on my game. He was. He was a little bit more into video games and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. we have the same, we played in the same teams growing up, you know, and my dad gave us both the same opportunities, you know, so but I kind of like, you know, continued on in, in, in my basketball career and he, you know, and he, he fell to other things. Now, many people probably, our European listeners probably don't know, they don't really know about the Puerto Rican league and about the history that Puerto Rico has in basketball. Yeah. Um, there's been, you know, so many great players, great coaches, Bill Jackson, Dr. Jack uh, Ramsey, uh, Tex Winter yep. that have gotten their, their start in the Puerto Rican league. So growing up, you know, that's kind of the league and the area where you started up, but growing up there, you know, how did the Puerto Rican league kind of lay the foundation for you and kind of talk a little bit about the, the Puerto Rican basketball league? Yeah, I mean, uh, our league has a lot of history. It's been going on for many years. You know, um, it's a four month league. It's always been, you know, it's not a year, all year round league. It's, a, you know, uh, four month to five month league. Um, um, you know the teams have gone down franchises. You know we got up to ten to eleven teams now. It used to be up to eighteen to twenty teams before. Uh, but a lot of history. A lot of players that have played in Europe. Um, one of the big names that you know people in 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 Greece might you know might know is Picolino Ortiz. You know, yeah. and he played in Barcelona as well. So, but a lot of history. A lot of great players. Um, I played in the Puerto Rican league. When I when I was 16 years old, I started playing. That was my rookie season, and back then I was able to you know play in college and then play in the summers in Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. which it was allowed to you know be a pro and be in school at the same time. But you know NCAA rules change all that, and 
uh, since then, you know, you're not allowed to do that no more. But um, it, those were my upbringings as far as, you know, learning how to play the game, uh, being more competitive, understanding that, you know, a game was just, uh, you know, constantly getting at, at a higher level. So I had to learn how to eat, rest, get stronger, you know, uh, just mentally prepare myself for games better. My IQ had to change as far as decision making because I knew I was playing with guys that that would read plays a little bit faster than high school yeah. kids, you know. So um, that was my that was my you know my camp, you know. Yeah. That, that league got me got me right for college uh, and prepared me for for the many things that came after high school. So I owe a lot to that league. Also won ch- five championships over there uh, before I I was in the NBA. So you know it really helped me mature and just. Uh, learn about the game a little bit, you know, quicker than, you know, most players usually, you know, take a long time to just go through high school, college, and then mm-hmm. go on to a pro. So uh, I'm indebted to that league forever, man. My wife actually played, uh, started her career in uh, Puerto Rico. She played in- Oh, oh really? Is, is Isabella, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she played there. I remember when I, I was in Italy and she was in Isabella and we would get the, this is 2008. So there was no cell phones, like no, like, you know, international. Yeah. So we get the phone cards and- calling each other back and forth and um and I, I know so oh, many people I know. yeah yeah so it's kind of you know crazy that you uh that you talk about it and I mean also I know yeah. so many players that play there and that like that league is it's not a baby like that league is it's a yeah. physical league so it's like for you to be yeah. 16 and getting your start there like I mean that just kind of shows like the maturity that you you know and how and how allowed you yeah. to kind of progress as a player yeah man I was I was you know to be honest I was a little intimidated at 16 but I knew you know that was Playing basketball and being a pro, you know, it's, it's all I dreamed about. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I knew after the first five minutes of the game when I was 16 years old, I knew I had to get myself together and just start playing, you know, at a high level because, you know, it was just what I wanted to do. And I, and I was constantly, you know, proving myself against vets and, and guys that I used to admire and be. I was a ball boy since I was five years old yeah. for, the, for that league. So um, it was just a dream come true. And, you know... Um, it was something that prepared me, you know, for the rest of, of my career. Now, you, you left home right around, I think, 16 or 17 years old, if I'm not mistaken. So, 18, know, 18, 18, 17, 18. 18, yeah. Yeah. So what was what was that the, the decision for you to, to leave home? I know you left home and you ended up going to uh, a school in Georgia with your with your yeah. uh, with your brother. So what, well, what I, was that decision and, and how did that, how did it, yeah. how did your parents feel about that? Like, you know, just letting just kind of you kind of leaving. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was something I always was, you know, it, it was in, in my bucket list, you can yeah. say, you know, I, I, I fell back then, you know, there was, I couldn't, you know, I wasn't an old AAU team that I could, you know, put a video together and send it to colleges. I knew I had to leave Puerto Rico to be able to be watched by all these colleges and, and universities I wanted to be a part of. So I told my dad, I was 14, actually, I was 14. And uh, I told my dad, look, I want to, I want to play in the States. I want to go to high mm-hmm. school in the States. And he found his family in, in Georgia that were kind enough to uh, accept me and take me in. And so I went over there. I went with my brother. My brother didn't like it. Yeah. <clears> so left, I, I stayed right there. Like two weeks or something like that? Yeah, yeah. He left after two weeks. Uh, he said, man, I don't, I really don't like it. You know, I ain't feeling it. So it was out in the country, to be honest. You know, it was nothing to do. <laughs> totally and um, yeah, so you, you know, I just went through the struggles of just being homesick and, and not having a comfortable living, you know, as far as like, being at home and getting, you know, you're used to eating certain things and being around your friends and family. Um, so that was a struggle, but I was with a family that just, man, took me in, took care of me. I didn't need, I didn't need nothing, you know, yeah. they, they provide me with everything. And, and um, so I went to school there that year and one season started, you know, I just started getting letters and offers, which is what I wanted to, you know, that was the main reason I went. So, but my parents, was, you know, they were supportive, you know, and, and looking back at it now, like, I don't know if I'm okay with, you know, uh, you know allowing one of my kids, yeah. like my kids at 14 to leave to another, not, you know, not another state. I was in Puerto Rico. I was leaving yeah. to the States, you know, exactly. like, I don't know. If, I don't know if I could do that with one of my kids, you know, right now with how things are and everything. It's just, yeah. I wouldn't feel comfortable, but, you know, shout out to my parents for allowing me to do that and, and, and allowing me to follow my dreams, you know, and, and, uh, me keep me, you know, keep on my focus, you know, by myself, you know, not really speaking the language I learned as I went, but I mean, I spoke English, but um, it's just a transition. It's hard yeah. at 14, you know, you're I mean, by yourself. And then, so in Georgia, I guess where you at Georgia in English and all that, like that whole culture yeah. is a lot different than yeah. you coming in. Southern you know, food, Southern yeah. food. I was, you know, <laughs> introduced to Southern food. I mean, I loved it, 
but everything was just new. And then the schoolwork and, you know, transitioning the homework and understanding, you know, uh, the grammar and all that, that was a struggle, man. Uh, basketball was always easy. It was something that I mm. wanted to do. It was my passion, but um, it was a big transition, you know, and, and uh, we decided as a family, my senior year to come back and finish at home. I was going to recruit it, you know, uh, good enough to, for me to be, you know, finish back home. And my dad wanted me to turn pro at 16. So we made, made that decision. It worked out now I can, you know, I can say, but, um, but it, it was, it was something that, you know, it helped me all those decisions, you know, helped me mature, helped mm -hmm. me see life through different eyes and, and understand that, you know, at any moment I knew I wanted to go, you know, I, I left when I was, then I went to college. I was like, I'm out of here. I'm going to college too. I'm going to Miami, my brother, I wanted my brother to come with me. So I told the school, I told you, look, I'm, I'll sign with you guys, but my brother has to come as well. That's love. So <laughs> they, they didn't have enough scholarships and they said, look, we'll put your brother. Uh, we got connections that uh, I would think it was Palm Beach Community College. He'll go there mm -hmm. for two years and then transfer and then play with you, your junior and senior. My brother went to, to Palm Beach Community College, man, after a couple of months, he said, man, this ain't for me. So he went back home because he was, he was in love. He was in love with this girl uh, that he ended up marrying, but, um, mm -hmm. but it didn't work out either for him. So I was like, man, you know, I'm, I'm staying, you know, yeah. I'm following this dream. So, uh, but yeah, man, my, my, my life's been, you know, uh, you know, through the struggle, I, I learned who I really am. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, uh, I just had to prove myself. I wasn't, I was never the tallest, the most, most athletic, but I knew I had to work hard, you know? And, um, and I, I always had faith. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I always have faith that I could make it, man. And, and I'm, I thank God for that. I feel, I feel very fortunate. The day you signed your scholarship to, to Florida International, um, you know, what was that feeling like? You know, when you're playing your first college basketball game and you're getting on campus, you walk around campus, like you said, like you had this dream since you were 14 years old. So, you know, once that dream was actually realized, you know, what was yeah. that feeling like for you? It was great, man. You know, I felt I was in the right route, you know, the route I, I put myself since I was a kid, you know, mm -hmm. Um, but it was never a dull moment. Like it, it was never like a moment where I could sit down. It's like, damn, you know, I made it. Cause it was a, always a, a transition process for me. You know, yeah. I had to, you know, it was, I get out of a game and I had a good game, but I have a test in the morning that I have to study. And then, you know, mm -hmm. it was just always so stressful. You know, I mm -hmm. never had a time where I could relax and enjoy, and, you know, other than winning games, you know, um, you know, in college, you have to maintain your grades to be able to be eligible to play. So, yeah. um, so I struggled with that as well, but um, no, it was, it was love, man. It was love. I mean, me getting a scholarship. I remember my assistant coach when we, I was signing the scholarship, he was like, this is, this is the biggest contract you're ever going to sign, you know, and I was know. Like, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but uh, no, I mean, I mean, all love, man. They, they gave me an opportunity. They told me you, you play from the beginning as a freshman, you know, they gave me the ball and they said, this is your team. So that was mainly the reason I came to FIU, you know, um, I was close to home. I could get on a plane. It was a two, two hour, 15 flight to Puerto Rico. Yeah. They can come visit me in Miami. You know, they got the Latin community, Everything. the Latin food. So yeah. I felt like I was at home, good weather. So, uh, it worked out, man. After your, you know, your a decorated career at Florida International, um, when did professional basketball, obviously you had been turned pro in Puerto Rico before, but when did like professional basketball abroad, like the NBA or possibly playing, you know, overseas, um, really seem like it was something that can like really happen for you? Um, after my, my senior year, I went through all that, you know, camps and, yeah. you know, summer league and all that stuff. Um, you know, I went through the not getting picked in the draft. Uh, you know, not getting picked in the draft really hurt me because, you know, I had two teams that really promised me. They say, we'll pick you at, at second round, early, whatever. Yeah, same. I had a, I had good, yeah, I had good summer camps and stuff. So I felt there was a big chance of me getting picked. Just, you know, for all of us, that's a dream, you know, yeah. getting picked in the draft. Um, it wasn't until maybe, like, uh, my first good game, you know, in Utah, like my my second, my third year in the in the league, where I was, you know, comfortable, and I said, okay, I belong here. Which, yeah. you know, I had my career high against Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Before that, my first year, you know, I was picked by Toronto, but it was a non guaranteed contract. They let mm -hmm. me go at the mid season. I ended up signing with Basconia for like a month, mm -hmm. and then I went back to the league and finished like a, I had like a ten day contract with Denver. So, you know, I was always like 
in that, you know, and trying to figure myself out, trying to see if I really fit it in in the league, if if I was good enough, you know, in my mind, I, you know, I always have faith, but it, that I struggled with that because I never had a guaranteed contract until yeah. like my third year, you know. Um, so it wasn't until then. And then uh, I had a good year that year in Utah. And then uh, that solidified my, you know, my, myself as a player um, in the in the NBA when they actually, you know, snapped me with a four year deal. So I, I, I knew I was good. Uh, but at the same time, I knew that contract could follow me everywhere. They could trade me. They could yeah. release me. They could yeah. they could do whatever. So it was, you know, I was constantly, you know, just trying to prove myself, even though I had a good contract, you know. So it's just tough, man. Being a pro is tough. It's no, not. It's I mean, not at easy. least for me. Yeah. For me, you know what I'm saying, Kyle? Like, I, I care about my legacy. Every yeah. time I stepped on that court, you know, I knew contracts would come and go and, you know, you'll get a good contract. You, got, you know, you have a good team. You, you're going to reach the finals. You're going to be in a good opportunity. A good, You know, you're going to be put in a good opportunity, surrounded by good players. So you're going to have a good season. You prepare yourself to have a good season. But, you know, and, and then that money will come with that. But legacy to me is is what, you know, it's what, try, it, you know, throw me. Yeah, exactly. It would drove me. So, um, you know, and, and I take this time to look at your career, man. Like you've done it all, man. You should Appreciate feel so it. proud of everything you've done, bro. Like, Appreciate uh, it. it's so tough to win, man. It's, it's so tough to win. And people don't understand it. It takes, you know, it takes a whole team to come together and then yeah. the, everybody understanding their each, you know, their role and just come together. It's just tough. But, uh, yeah, I, I care more about legacy, man. And, um, you know, having my name live forever after you're done, it's just, it's just beautiful, man. You know, um, like I said, money comes and goes, and you know, if you're a hard worker and you're disciplined, you're always gonna have good opportunities to make money and surround yourself with the right people. But that legacy, man, that legacy is just beautiful. I mean, you, you, you've, your name is definitely stamped. I mean, your legacy is definitely stamped. I mean, for all the things that you you accomplished in your career. I mean, it's definitely. I mean, especially, and I mean, we could jump right into it now. But I mean, just just playing for the. I, I have more questions about the NBA, but I want to talk more about what you said about legacy. And I want to know about, you know, your mindset when you, does your mindset change when you play for the NBA or you playing for a club team versus when you put on that national team jersey? Does it, does oh, your, most definitely. Yeah. So can you talk about that? Like, cause I mean, especially for, I mean, Puerto Rico, I guess you could say is almost, I guess, I don't want to say an afterthought, but it's almost sometimes an afterthought, like almost like the basketball world, especially cause it's like, you know, you have the U S and then you have Puerto Rico and lots of like lots of the islands. So, for you and especially, you know, for your teammates, um, you know, how important was that to, you know, to carry that legacy and carry that, like every time you wore that national team jersey, like what did that mean for you? When you play for your national team, it's just, it's special because you, you're representing your family, you're representing your upbringings, your culture, your heritage, you know, you're representing a, a group of people that they could care less how much money you have, where you went to school, you know, you play in the NBA, they don't care about none of that. They care yeah. about you, you know, playing with pride, with honor, with discipline, you know, like dedicate your, dedicating yourself for so many years to, to your, to your, you know, your, your, your island. It's, it's just beautiful, man. You know, I feel like, you know, I feel so proud to have been a part of that uh, for 15 years, you know, and, and um, if you're a basketball player going over in Puerto Rico, uh, that's all you want to do, represent, yeah. uh, you know, and put on that uniform. So it was always a dream of mine. And I was fortunate enough to be the captain for so many years, over 12 years for that team. And uh, it just opened the doors, you know, for me outside of the game, you know, and worldwide, you know, uh, it just gave me the opportunity to to be myself, to play my game. When I played in the NBA, it was, it was different because, you know, you're just – another role player, you know, mm -hmm. in the position that I was, you know, you weren't, you didn't come from a big time high school. You didn't come from a big time, you know, I didn't go to a big time school. Um, I went to a small program at, you know, in, in Miami at FIU for international university, which I'm grateful. Um, but, you know, I was, like I told you, I was never the most athletic, the, yeah. you know, the tallest, you know, the strongest. And I knew I had to work harder for everything. So, Every time I put on that uniform, I always wanted to represent with, with pride, you know, and especially playing against U.S. Mm -hmm. I always, you know, just wanted to, to represent the colors of my flag with, with, with honor. And you just play that much harder. It's just, you feel like a superhero, man, to be honest, you know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, 
and you know it's it's just it's just a business when you play for a club you know obviously it's our job you know we we, we need to step up and, and be professional in every sense of the word but uh, playing for Puerto Rico you know you have to play with passion love because it's you representing your family you know I don't get a salary when I was playing for Puerto Rico it's it's something that I it, it, you know, it had to come from me, my, my love for my people and, 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 and be able to do it uh, genuinely, you know, every yeah. summer for, you know, I would play all year round, you know, our season in Europe is all year round. And then in the summers, that's the time where I take my family to Disney. I go to, you know, vacations with them and stuff. And I just put all that aside and, 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 um, and just focus on my, my national team, you know, yeah. um, because because I know how much it meant to me, you know. Not everybody maybe feels the same way, you know. But but I know that the guys that are born and raised in Puerto Rico, they they know what it means. Uh, not only for you, for your family, but for the people of Puerto Rico. Yeah, I mean, and, and the the people of Puerto Rico have the most pride, you know. Like you can go, you can see yeah. it anywhere. You can see it in you know New York City. You can see it in Miami. You can see it you know, anywhere yeah. you go. So it's like. I mean, that feeling has to be like, I'm getting like this, like kind of low key, like goosebumps just thinking about like, you know, yeah. having that ability to play for your country and to represent like the, the, like I said, Puerto Ricans are already prideful people. So, so once you see that on a, on a grand stage and see the success that, you know, that representing your country in, on a grand stage, I mean, it has to be, yeah. unreal. It has to be unbelievable. Yeah. No, no, and, and, you know, the opportunity that we got uh, you know, to be a part of history, mm -hmm. uh, beating the U S in that 2004 Olympics. That was just, come on, man. Like yeah. that was, that was beautiful, man. Like after that, we thought we won the Olympics. We thought we had a chance yeah. to win the Olympics, you know yeah. what I said? But, but that's, that's the next what I day, ask you. That's what I want to ask you. Cause yeah. this is, this is 2004, right? So, I mean, for people that don't know the, the historical, one of the most historical games in, in, in Olympic history is the, the USA versus Puerto Rico. Um, you guys won, I mean, you, played unbelievable i mean i, I rewatched the game like three or four times but i mean I, I watched the game live actually you know i was that you know when i was I think it was right when i was like a senior in high school but i watched rewatched it a couple couple weeks ago and it was like first of all the way you dictated the game it was like the first half <laughs> like you were literally because i seen the stats yeah I, I can't remember you had 20 something points and you know all this type of you know assists and stuff like that but like the first half it was like literally you were just setting up everybody like setting up your teammates setting up everybody and yeah. then the second half like you just caught like this killer instinct and it was pull up jumper transition three this that and the other yeah. so like the way like you the way you played that game is like i think for point guards like it was like a clinic like in my opinion like a, it was a masterful like clinic like a master class on how like a point guard should play but Thank the question you, i have is there was no social media there was barely any cell phones there was barely anything so this is 2004 you guys are in athens greece you just beat the 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 usa team um what was like what was that feeling like after the game like you know like how were you guys able to celebrate was it like you could call home it wasn't like you could post on you know ig or TikTok or whatever yeah. there was no youtube clips there was nothing so what was that like yeah that feeling like man it was it was love man um you know like i said to you you know we we thought we really had a chance he said we we can be us we can be anybody in this tournament Virginia. and the second day the second game i think it was the second it was a back to back might have been um, you know, I think we played uh uh Saras in them. Yeah. <laughs> and they they brought us back to earth, you know, uh with their big plays and stuff. Uh but yeah, it was it was a great feeling, man. I, that you know, that changed my career. That game changed mm -hmm. my career completely, man. Uh on and off the court, you know. Mm -hmm. Um and it just um it put me at a stage where I knew I had to carry my name with a lot more respect. Um be more disciplined about the way I did things on and off the court. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, going to Puerto Rico, you know, it, it was just love everywhere. Yeah. And I said, okay. Um, okay. I know where I stand now, you know, yeah. as far as, you know, uh, you know, your name, you know, how it grows after championships and all that. So, and, and, and I always cared about that. You know, uh, my father always taught me, you know, your name is going to carry, you need to, you know, carry yourself with, with a lot of respect and, and respect the game as well. So, mm -hmm. I'm always aware of that, you know, uh, but yeah, man, like um, to this day, you know, people in Puerto Rico uh, celebrate that game. Like it's a, yeah. a freaking birthday, man. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a yeah. birthday, you know, and, right. and you mentioned New York and, and Orlando and the community there. I mean, I go to Disney and all the Puerto Ricans, you know, we always have our flags and our shirts. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, it's like, it's a parade every day. Yeah. And, uh, and people are just proud, man. They come up to me and they show so much love and, you know, um, I have kids in Puerto Rico. I mean, I'm, 
uh, social studies books in the schools, we, you know, I'm, they have my picture like that. And that's, that's a proud moment for me. That's, that's, amazing, that's so man. much love. So to me, it's just, um, it carries a lot of weight, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm just proud, man. I'm, I'm proud. And, and uh, from here to the day I die, and I'm always going to be a proud Puerto Rican. And, and, and um, I'm very passionate when it, when it comes to talking about my people and where I'm from. So, yeah, that, that was so much love, man, winning that game. Now I want to talk uh two two kind of two kind of instances. So first of all, you talk about the pride. Now you you were the flag bearer at the Olympics in Puerto Rico, if I'm not mistaken, right? So yes, sir. So what was that feeling like to walk out and you know carry the Puerto Rican flag amongst <clears throat> not like not like it's the United States, not like this is the whole entire world. Like you're waving a flag. So like what was that that feeling like? This is and this is even before the basketball game. So I'm saying, what was that feeling yeah. like? You know for you. Uh, it was truly an honor, man. You know, uh, I got the call. I think I was I was in Miami. Mm-hmm. Was it Miami? Yeah, I was in Miami. Uh, I got the call after my good season in Utah. Yeah. Uh, after no, it was yeah before going into my 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 contract here in Utah because I didn't know if I was gonna be able to go because I was a free agent. I just had a good year. That, that yeah, that's what it was. I had a good year. I didn't know, so I was waiting to sign an extension with Utah. So I didn't know if I was gonna be a part of of the Olympics because I was, you know, negotiating my contract. And I said, look, if I, if I don't get into an agreement with Utah, with any team yeah. at free agency, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, you know, participate. So, and, and uh, a week later they said, look, well, we're trying to, you know, we're going to name you the, the flag barrier for the Olympics. And I was like, oh man, I got to go. I got to yeah. go. <laughs> so, you know, I try to, uh, you know, force my agent to, you know, accelerate that process, that free agency process negotiation, because I said, oh, well, I have to be in the, the Olympics, you know, so, uh, but it was a, tr- a true honor, man, I was so happy. Um, that kind of started my, my, um, you know, I was motivated to go to the Olympics, but I was even more motivated yeah. just being, being the flag barrier and, and having the world watch you, you know, walk down uh you know that stadium with you know holding the flag is you, you could see the smile on my face i was mm-hmm. so so excited man it was it's truly an honor now you you have you rewatched the 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 game and how many times have you watched it in the u.s, or the US i watched the game i mean I, I watch a lot of people tag me to this day when they, yeah. they put highlights and stuff yeah and i always try to show love and but the game game itself like sitting there watching it it's been a couple of years yeah um i normally try to do it on the the day that you know we August fifteenth, yeah, uh, I try to I try to watch the game just to honor that moment. Uh, I may go through the whole game, or maybe you know stop and watch yeah. a couple of plays and stuff. But but uh, at the beginning, I watched it over and over and over again. You know, do you remember like your like your mentality? Like I know it's hard to say really now, but do you really remember like your mentality and kind of like you know what your you know what your thoughts and kind of what you were kind of going through during that game, or was it more like like kind of like an out of body experience? Like after the game was over, you were just like yo, like what did we just do? Like you know, yeah, you know, you know what's funny? Like we played them at least three, four times that yeah. summer before yeah. before we played them in the Olympics, and um, we we're trying to figure out you know how to play them and stuff. Um, you know, and, and then every time we play them at closed doors, uh, Larry Brown would tell our coach, let's play man to man. Don't play zone. Mm-hmm. That was, you know, and our coaches, you know, thought, you know, well, we're going to, this is, you're giving us how to, you know, the, the, the recipe on how to yeah. play you guys the first game. Yeah. We're definitely going to play you zone because <laughs> for some reason, you know, you're going to struggle. So, um, that's what we played. We played a triangle and two, but mm-hmm. one man in front of Timmy. Mm-hmm. And another one, I think, went with AI. Mm-hmm. Or I think it was a boxing one with Timmy. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's all we played. If you look at the film, we, we hardly were playing man to man. We knew their abilities and and what plays players we were facing. So we we need to we needed to prepare for that game as as, as best as we could. Uh, I think after the 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 exhibition games and friendly games, we had uh, uh, scrimmages. Uh, we knew pretty much that we had a good chance if we played the mm-hmm. right way because. You know, it was just, um, you know, guys weren't intimidated to play those NBA guys no more. They they would look at you. Know, we we would play and then we'll go to dinner. We had mm-hmm. the uh, functions that we would, you know, uh, be together at. So we had a relationship with those guys. We kind of knew them. And, you know, you kind of feel like well, I can beat these guys. Yeah. You know, when you kind of build that relationship. So 
we went into that game with that confidence, you know, and at halftime we were up by, I think it was, we were up by 21 or something. Yeah. And I know we looked at each other in the locker room and we were like, man, <laughs> it was total silence, you yeah. know? And then, you know, I was, I was more, uh, you know, I was a little bit more, you know, more afraid of when we were up by 21 than being, you know, up by yeah. five points. Cause you know, when you up by 21 second half, you can't lose the game, man. Like yeah, you, you gotta be able to control the tempo yeah. and decision making gotta be on point for you to be able to, you know, uh, come up with a win. And then they got close to nine points. I was like, damn, man, you know, here, here comes this run. Yeah. But but we were able to sustain ourselves and just, you know, stay the course and and and, and play the right way and make the right decisions at the right time. It just they went through for us. Yeah, man, absolutely, man. Like I said, I mean, just even here when I was, you know, I'm telling people that, you know, I'm going to have you on a podcast. That's the first, first thing everybody talks yeah, about. Yeah, that's love, man. Thank you. <laughs> man, so, I mean, that's, that's like I said, man, that's huge. Now, uh, kind of an off, I guess not off topic question, but other than, because I mean, I, I've never, unfortunately, I never get a chance to play in the Olympics and I'm always curious about like what that experience is. So, other than hey, you, you might be you might be Puerto Rican, man. Hey, you man, don't know. Hey, you, you might be Puerto Rican. So. <laughs> <laughs> we can check, man. We can check. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get on that. I'm gonna get on that. We need your play, boy. <laughs> I wear about it at all, but uh, <laughs> um, what other than the basketball game and obviously the game, you know, experience on the court, walking away from the Olympics, like what was probably in and obviously the flag bearer, but what was kind of like your most memorable, you know, memory walking away from that Olympic experience? Um, you know, you, you hardly, it's so hard to, to qualify for the Olympics, yeah. at least for us, you know, USA every year, you know, every time there's a, an Olympics, you know, they're going to be there, but it's just so hard, man. And you never know when you're going to be back, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, and we haven't been back. We mm -hmm. haven't been back. So it's, it's something that, you know, me as a general manager now is something that I would love for my guys to, to experience, you know, so, um, it's just knowing that, you know, you never know if you'll be, if you're going to be back before you retire. That was mm -hmm. kind of like my, damn, you know, and all yeah. you have is memories. Uh, the memories that you, you take, you know, from winning, um, beating U.S. and flag barrier. And just uh, one of the things they do the most in the Olympics is change. They change pins. Yeah. Uh, all the countries, they change pins. So. Uh, that was that was something that you know every day the guys would be oh man what, what pins you have and yeah. it was just those little memories you know you you take with yourself and um the relationships you know we used to you know have breakfast and in, in in the cafeteria and and then have you know the, the williams sisters sit next yeah. to you or you know michael phelps and you see the girl the women's basketball and all these these athletes that you see on tv all the time just just having lunch with you and just mm -hmm. You're sharing experiences with other countries and other athletes. That's that's what you take, man. That that was a great experience. The Olympics are just something else, man. Yeah, I can I can imagine, man. I can imagine. We gotta, we yeah. gotta check on that that Puerto Rican DNA, man. See if I can. Yeah, yeah. See, <laughs> see, <laughs> see sure. if I can flip it. <laughs> yeah. Now, I want to get it too, because like you know, most of our our listeners are are, are European, um, and I want to talk about your your European experience, your Euro League experience. Um, so really kind of at almost at like the prime of your career, you decide to, you know, you sign a Euro league with Maccabi. Um, so yep. talk about, you know, what kind of went into that decision and was it, you know, more or less like, you know, you just kind of wanting to, you know, try something new. And then what was your, what was your experience like in, uh, in Israel? I mean, Tel Aviv is obviously one of the, you know, a great city, a beautiful city and the fans yeah. there, um, you know, the fans there are amazing. The club is amazing, but you know, what was, what was your experience like there, you know, being really like your kind of your first extended amount of time over, you know, playing abroad. Yeah. Uh, you know, playing abroad was obviously, you know, plan B for my career, you know, yeah. you know plan A was the NBA always. Um, I knew of Maccabi. I knew of Maccabi. Um, I didn't, I, I, I knew little of Israel, you know, mm. so um, when we made the decision, that was coming off uh, 2005. I was coming uh, coming off of a, a year with uh, with the Orlando Magic. Mm -hmm. um, my, my bad. It was 2009, 2008, 2009. One of those uh, one of those years. And um, and I only had that summer. I only had an offer on the table from from Phoenix. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, you know, I'm looking for a, for a long term commitment from a from a team. And uh, I was in the Bahamas with my family and I, and I got a call from my agent saying that Maccabi, you know, had offered me a three, four year deal. 
uh, to play for them. And um, and I had to think about it, to be honest with you. I told my wife, hey, look, it's, I think it's going to be Israel. You know, the, the offer is, is, you know, pretty good. Um, and she was like, you know, Israel. And I would, you know, we started Googling. We got on Google. We went yeah. to the business center at the hotel. We started Googling. And um, and it, it wasn't what a lot of people expect for Israel to be. Absolutely. You go to Maccabi and you've been, you've been to, you've been to Tel Aviv many times, you know, yeah. it's, it's beautiful out there. Yeah. So the palm trees, uh, the beach. Yeah. Palm trees. It looks like you're in Miami. It's like Miami. You know? Yeah. That's what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I said, look, I'm going to go by myself. I'm going to take on this deal. I'm going to, you know, go by myself. At the time we had, we had our, our firstborn child. So mm. and she was like two years old. So I said, I'm going to go by myself and I'm seeing, I'm going to, you know, see how everything is. And then I'll bring you, I'll bring you up with me. I had just, uh, we just hadn't heard. So, um, and it was love, man. I got there and it's class A organization, man. Maccabi, you know, opened the doors for me in Europe and mm -hmm. I was more than grateful. You know, um, they showed me so much love uh, from the fans at the airport to my last day winning that championship, you know, mm -hmm. and celebrating. So um, it was just a great experience. And, and um, uh it was sad for me because I wanted to be a part of that, you know, that club for many years. Yeah. Uh, towards the end of my contract that year, um, they told me, you know, we needed to renegotiate the contract. And I was, you know, I wasn't in the position to do that. I was, you know, coming off a championship and I, had, I felt I, have a, I had a great, I had signed a, a good year, a good, a good contract for many years to come. And they just couldn't afford it. And, mm -hmm. um, we left, we left them in good terms, you know, and that's when Miami called that summer and, and decided to, you know, offer me a year deal. So, but, you know, Europe, you know, I, that was my first time playing Euro league with them, you know, and yeah. we won the domestic league. So, but it, it was, it was great, man. I had a great experience with Maccabi. What was your, uh, your initial, you know, uh, first experience, like, you know, playing in Euro league, um, you know, coming out of there, like, you know, like you said, you, I guess for you, because you kind of played the international, so you kind of knew some of the international names, but yeah. at the same time, it was like, you know, what was that first experience, like, you know, playing in that league, in the EuroLeague, um, you know, during that first season? It was, yeah, it was, I mean, I knew, I knew of, of players, you know, playing with FIBA and their national yeah. team, so I was, I was very familiar with, with the play, you know, the FIBA rules and all that, because of the national team, so um, I knew what to expect, you know, but it was, it was great, man, it was very competitive, um, it was, um, I, I would say comparing it to the NBA, you know, you pay attention to the details, you know, the preparation. It's um, it's a little bit more uh, detail oriented because, you know, you, you wait for that one game a week mm -hmm. or that two games. Yeah, when you play domestically, you play once a week and then you play Euroleague, you play, you know, you're once a week too. So you only have two games to prepare for it. So you kind of like focus in on those two games on a daily basis. Uh, there's teams that might practice twice a day and just go over plays and plays for you know the teams that you, you're preparing for so and the, in the nba it's just one one day after the, yeah. the next you you you're getting ready for the other team for the next team for the next team and uh, that's time sometimes that you don't don't practice you know when yeah. I, and if i was when i was on a on a team that we had a lot of vets you know conditioning was on your own because you know yeah. that 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 coach is going to take care of those those vets and mm -hmm. you know maybe not practice as hard or or not practice as much so it was just different, you know, um, but I loved it, man. I love the preparation, the intensity of the EuroLeague, the, the love that you guys that you guys get from the fans. And uh, it's just different. It's, it's the fans are more involved in the game, the, the chanting and the, 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 you know, the singing and the fires and everything. Yeah. You know how it is. Especially, especially uh, it the just places a, you've been. You've been in some. Yeah, yeah. Some, some man, I'm telling you. So, yeah. So it was, it was a great experience, man. I love the EuroLeague. Now, and I want to shift back to, to Miami, and I have two two questions about that. First of all, Miami is basically home, so it's like signing with the Heat, you know, what was that like for you, you know, to basically be playing at home, you know, at the crib, basically, yeah. you know, playing there. And then you were part of the the early part of the the, the big three. Um, so first answer, to, you know, the part about, you know, being home and, and playing with the yeah. Heat and playing with Pat Riley and all that, and then also just the – the, the big three, the, that that first, you know, the Heatles, you know, that 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 yeah. all that ride. So what was all that like? How was that? Nah, like? nah, it was great. It was great. It was. I felt like you know going back to college. Yeah, you know, my early years. Uh, just you know, I I had a a solid career here in Miami with with FIU and 
And then uh, going into the pros, you know, I still, you know, had a lot of love from the city and, and then coming back and, and being, you know, coming back as a pro and, and playing for the for your hometown team, it was just great, man. And all I wanted to do was to have a solid season. Mm-hmm. If not a great season, a solid season, because I knew if I had a bad season and, and you know, just being here in Miami, you know, where people see you in the supermarket, see you at the restaurant, see you everywhere. You don't want to be, you don't want to have, yeah, you don't want to have a bad season and still live in the city that you, you're having bad yeah. seasons. You know, that was, that was my only thing. I was like, come on, man, we gotta, we gotta, you know, play the right way. We gotta do what's right. Um, but, you know, um, thankfully, you know, I had solid season when I was with, with the Heat and mm-hmm. that year that Braun came and be, they became the big three. It was just, like you said, it was the Heatles, man. Yeah. It, everywhere we went, it, it didn't matter at what time we arrived at the hotel, three, four in the morning, there was at least 100, 200 people just waiting just to see us, like, not see us, because nobody wanted to see me, see them <laughs> getting off the bus and uh, into the hotel, or getting out of the hotel, getting into the bus. It was just a great experience, man. Um, uh, just being a part of that team, you know, it was a uh, true brotherhood to this day. Not only mm-hmm. that team, but every team I was part of, yeah. uh, you know, I built great relationship with those guys. and. Um, uh, the NBA is, you know, was was great for my career, man. That's what I was gonna say. I mean, before we kind of, you know, wrap up the the NBA part, um, you know, it seemed like, you know, all the teammates I've seen, like recently, I was, you know, on your IG with golfing with D Wade. Um, they were talking about before about you and Carl Malone, and um, you know, all the teammates, and even the guys I talk to. I mean, they always, you know, have such, you know, even the guys in Europe, they always have so much great things to say about you. But oh, thank you, man. The question I have is, you know, Miami Heat, you were in the NBA Finals with the Pistons. You played for the legendary Boston Celtics. Um, you know, you were there with, you know, John Stockton and Mark Jackson, you know, backing them up as point guards and playing for all these, you know, legendary figures and, you know, in the league. What would you say was your most memorable moment in the NBA? Man. Um, I mean, aside from... Damn, that's a good question. Aside from playing in the finals with with Detroit, mm-hmm. aside from um, you know, from you know Michael Jordan calling my name at half court at uh, you know at warm ups, <laughs> yeah, I, I had that experience. Like, I was in Utah and he that's was in dope. Washington, and he was uh, I was in the layup line and I hear somebody Royal, Royal Carlos, and I'm ignoring, thinking it's a fan or something. I'm yeah. just getting ready for the game. And I and I hear about like the third Arroyo. I'm it's coming from the court. So I look at half court and there's MJ like tucking his shirt in, like tying his pants, yeah. calling me. He's the only one at half court. So I go, oh shit, it's Jordan. <laughs> so I just put it over there. And I say, what's going on, MJ? He's like, he's looking at me up and down, like young fella, like that. Like I call you, I've been calling you like what, three months. <laughs> and then he's like, Puerto Rico, huh? Right, he's, he's tying his, you know, his, his strings and stuff. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm Puerto Rico. Like, okay. My wife's in Puerto Rico. Like, okay, okay. What's her name? Anita. Anita or something. I don't remember her name. Uh, or Cedar. I don't remember her name. Uh-huh. But he said he wanted to know more. Well, yeah, I go over there. I golf and this and that. And we chatted for like a good 30 seconds. All right, well, young fella, have a good game now. That's love. Say, okay, okay. And I was like, I turned around. I was like, oh, shit. I wanted to look at everybody to see if they saw what I was, you know, I was talking to him. But I, that was that was one of my biggest memories, like being the last the the last sub uh, substitution for John Stockton too. Yeah, that was that was that was that meant a lot to me, you know. Yeah. Um, the last time he walked off the court, it was me that brought him out, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, when I found out I made the Toronto team, you know, mm-hmm. my first year, uh, I just have a great memories, man. Being in uh, with the big three, being in Boston with with. You know, I've always wanted to be, you know, uh, be on a team where Shaq was on a yeah. team too. I wanted to be Shaq's, yeah. Shaq's team because I heard so many stories and it was, oh man, it was never a dull moment with that boy. <laughs> he was so funny, it. man. He was so funny, man. Shaq was amazing. Uh, you know, being in Boston too, I was not only Shaq, it was KG, Ray yeah. Allen, Paul Pierce, Rondo, it was Jermaine. Uh, you know, I had some great teammates, man. Some great experience. I can't complain. I had some legendary coaches too, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't complain, bro. You I gotta, can't you, complain. You gotta, you gotta write a book, man. You gotta do something. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I've been telling me to write a book. I got some stories, man. I got I some could, stories, man. I could only imagine, man. Now, now yeah. you you finish up your career 
at, in Barcelona before you went back to Puerto Rico, but you finished your career in, in Barcelona. Um, you know, Barcelona is Barcelona. It's a big name, big club, big brand. Yeah. So, you know, what was that, that, that last season like, and did you know that was going to kind of be like your, you know, kind of like your, your final year? Um, in Europe. Yeah. I wanted, you know, to close out Europe the right way. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't think I would go back to Europe after I played in Puerto Rico, after Galatasaray, and went through that financial stage where they were struggling to pay players and stuff. Uh, it really hurt me because I, I saw myself retiring uh, in in, Mar in uh, Galatasaray. You know, mm -hmm. I had a great experience. Fans were amazing. We were winning. Mm -hmm. We had good teams, a great relationship with Ottoman. I mean, uh, it's one of my favorite coaches, top coach in Europe for me. And um, so, you know, just finishing in Barca, it was my it was my last draw as far as Europe. You know, I was I had other things in mind, you know, going to Puerto Rico and buying a franchise over there and buying a team, being a team owner and and playing at the same time, which is something that I wanted to do. And I got to do that after Barcelona. But Barcelona, man, that was that was a you know, that was you know, you play in Barcelona, you know all these top teams, you know, yeah. prestige teams, you know, Barcelona, Real Madrid. You know, Milan, Maccabi, you know, Seska, all these top teams, you know, you always, you know, if you, if you know about Europe, you want to be a part of these teams, mm -hmm. you know, and um, and I, I had the opportunity, you know, to to be with them. And at the, you know, I was, what, 35, 34? I was, it was at the age, you know, at the age where normally guys are like, kind of like, you know, playing in lower, lower level teams and stuff. Yeah. So I was fortunate to, to get, you know, get picked up by, by Barcelona uh, towards the end of my career in, in, in Europe. So, uh, but I had a great experience, man. Um, it was, it was very competitive. A lot of, um, um, you know, expectations with that team, you know, yeah. you know how yeah. it is when you play yeah. for those top clubs, uh, you don't play well. And the next, next day, everybody's the fan, fans, media, every, everybody thinks you're just, the world is coming down, yeah. you know, you can't lose a game. No, not so, at all. Not at all. Yeah. So, but you know, it just, uh, it helps you, uh, helps you mature. It helps you continue to be competitive at, you know, at least for me at, at the age I was, it pushed me to be a better player because I know the expectations, you know, and the teammates that I had, you know, when you're in big club and uh, you have good teammates, you want to be able to prepare yourself for games the right way and mm -hmm. play at a certain level. And that pushes everyone. So, um, but it was great. It was great. I still stay in contact with a lot of those players. Yeah, I mean, I love the one of the quotes you said. I mean, you said, like, you know, talking about your EuroLeague experience or your European basketball experience, you said something like, like, the opportunities of me playing in those countries really opened the door for you. And, like, you know, you talked about, like, you having the network and, you know, having and building yeah. those relationships. And, you know, yeah. so just talk about how important that is because, like, you know, a lot of – I think a lot of younger players, you know, when they go abroad and, you know, when they go overseas, they don't necessarily – they think about the now, but they don't necessarily think about – you know, what, yeah. you know, playing abroad, you know, can actually do for you and help you in, you know, in much more than only just like your basketball career. Yeah, you know, it helped you, you know, and I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, nowadays, you know, you know, I was teammates, you know, with with uh, Hiro Turkoglu yeah. uh, in, in Orlando. Mm -hmm. Turkoglu is the president of the Turkish Federation. Mm -hmm. um, I was teammates with um, with uh, Andre Kirilenko in yeah. Utah, and Kirilenko is the president for the Russian yeah. uh you know, federation, basketball federation. So, you know, now I'm in a position where I'm the general manager for my Olympic national team. And, and you know, we constantly talk, you know, about, you know, putting together scrimmages and mm -hmm. tournaments and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, preparing for a qualifier. So I want to do, you know, like, a, you know, a Super Cuatro, a tournament mm -hmm. for whatever, you know, uh, uh, and just FIBA in general, you know, mm -hmm. you just build, create and create relationships where in the long run, then you're going to help you connect and, and uh, guide you through to the channels that, you know, that we are now. And it's just great. You know, uh, the players and agents that I have, you know, built relationships mm -hmm. through the years in Europe, you know, they call me to this day and, and I help them get, you know, uh, they, you know, cr across the water, help them get to the BSN Puerto Rican league. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of players want to be a part of that or go to Europe, vice versa, Puerto Rican players that want to play in Europe, you know, mm -hmm. I'll be making those calls. So it's, it's good to just, uh, build network as you play in Europe, you know, and maintain those relationships, not, not, you know, uh, fall back on, you know, I haven't talked to this guy in ages, you know, you just want to continue to at least touch base every mm -hmm. couple months, you know, and see what's going on, depending on what you want to do after you retire there, you know, uh, from basketball. So you just got to build and uh, build that ground groundwork, do that groundwork now. And for the future, you know, you're going to have those relationships 
we that love the game, you know, yeah. it's, it's the only thing that we know how to do yeah. and we love since we were kids, you know, we'll be, we'll, we'll be a part of the game forever, man. So mm -hmm. just, uh, you know, building those, those relationships, network as much as you can and, and it'll be easier for when, from when you retire. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now you, you talked about your being the general manager of the, the Puerto Rican national team. When you got that opportunity at Riz, a Rosen, um, you know, what was your feelings like and what are your goals, you know, for the, the Puerto Rican national team? You know, what are you, where do you see the, the team and, and, you know, how do you, yeah. when you talk about legacy, how do you want to leave your legacy now, you know, as a general manager? I mean, I'm trying to do the best I can, you know, I'm relying on my experience to, to guide me, you know, obviously, um, uh, you know, and, and obviously, you know, maintain that relationship with the new generations coming up, uh, uh, be aware of those guys coming in, um, preach the word of uh, pride and discipline when you come, you know, and, and wear this uniform and represent it. Uh, a lot of guys are that we recruit and want to be a part of the Puerto Rican national team, weren't born and raised in Puerto Rico. You mm -hmm. know, their families, their heritage, their grandparents or mm -hmm. mothers were born in Puerto Rico, but they were moved to the States and they're really not connected with the culture. So that falls on us, you know, mm -hmm. to kind of build that, that, uh, uh, awareness, culture awareness on those guys, you know, uh, and, um, and, you know, just build, uh, build a new culture. We just recently hired a new coaching staff, you know, mm -hmm. uh, continue to stay in touch with the players that are, you know, a part of our program that are playing in Europe and the Latin American leagues and, um, and just preach, you know, you have to have genuine in interest to be a part of our program and represent Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not here to force nobody ha nobody's hand to, to to represent Puerto Rico. It has to come from you. Mm -hmm. Just because you were born and raised in Puerto Rico. And right now, you know, we have a lot of these, you know, we have players that are in, in their free agent years or, you know, they're they're you know they're in their off season and they're training to to have a better uh, to, for next season. And, you know, they don't want to get injured. So they don't want to put themselves at risk to play for the national team where it really doesn't pay you a salary. Like I had told mm -hmm. you, you know, it has to, you have to have the love to, to represent and the Absolutely. pride to represent Puerto Rico. And it puts a lot of things in jeopardy when you, you know, you're, you're a pro, you know, you, you're relying on that money to come in and that contract. So it's, it's tough. It's tough. You really have, you know, have to want to do it because of the love and to, and to represent Puerto Rico. So, um, and I understand that because I was mm -hmm. a player, you know, yeah. so, um, but, you know, uh, obviously our ranking, needs to improve mm -hmm. uh uh when i was playing i think we were the top 10 in the world at one mm -hmm. point you know ranking right now is it's, it's um uh, it's uh i don't know where it is as it's, as it's last uh it was uh classified but um uh, uh we need to improve our ranking as well and that comes with winning tournaments and qualifiers and, and putting a good team together that's gonna take us uh, you know, to, to the, uh, the next world games and the next Olympics and, you know, have those and preach to those guys, how those opportunities open the doors for me out outside of the court, you Absolutely. know, so, uh, and on the court. So, um, it's a, it's a full-time job, man. I, you know, a lot of people tell me, you know, it's, it's a part-time job for me because of how the, the FIBA program is now. And you, mm -hmm. we played in windows like, like yeah. FIFA does, but, um, uh, but it's a full time for us and the coaches, you know, we constantly, you know, talking uh, to talking about, you know, our next uh, players coming in, you know, and um, who we play next. Like right now, our our next window is in Washington on yeah. the 24th. We play USA. We play USA in Washington. And then the next day we fly to Cuba and we play Cuba uh, for that window. So we were constantly, you know, having Zoom meetings and get preparing and making sure the players are healthy mm -hmm. and who's traveling, who we're contacting and all that stuff. So, uh, but I love it, man. I love it. The basketball, basketball gave me so much and especially the Puerto Rican national team and national team. So I feel like this is a time for me to get back uh, with what I'm doing and, and with the time I have now. Yeah, man. I mean, I don't, I don't know how you do it, man. How you, how you. Live. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> you know, I'm doing the music stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, what I'm excited that's, about, that's what I want to talk about, man. Because I don't know how yeah. you do it. How you do it? You know, you're, you're, first of all, you're still hooping. I see, I see the the hoop games that you <laughs> see in, the, in, in your backyard, yeah. and, and yeah, I mean, you got yeah, your yeah. family, you got your kids, then you doing your job. I love hooping, man. 
and and then you then all of a sudden I mean you're you're a music star like you're a reggae like a legitimate <laughs> like legitimate <laughs> reggae toll music star man like you, you you have millions of views on YouTube streams you know Thanks, singles man. you know some of the collaborations with some of the biggest reggae song artists um yeah. first of all where did this all you know all come from and you know this is like you say you're a basketball player but like you know i said i, I read somebody you know you have roots in music and you've always been a fan but where did this kind of like when did this kind of all become you know serious for you i guess you could say like you know it's something that's like just like i'm, I'm really legitimately going to you know hone in on this craft and you know try to see what come, comes out of it yeah um i i put a song out i mean i've always been passionate about music but i put a song out in 2009 and I knew that summer how how much it you know it took to really produce a song. The hours that you have to uh, constantly be you know be in the studio to just produce something at a high level and, and do it the right way, and how much money is invested in marketing mm -hmm. and putting your song out, and all the hours you have to do for you know, promoting the song and radio stuff. And I was like, you know what? I don't have the time for this right now. Yeah. Um, and I waited until the end of my career after I was retired to come, you know, and I will have the time, let, let, you know, let, let's try this, you know, and mm -hmm. back then it, it, the music uh, business side of it, it wasn't what it is now. And yeah. I saw it at how it is now. And I said, look, you know, I can, I can put, you know, multiple singles collabs together and, you know, kind of get supported by a, you know, by a label. And if I can do that, I'm good, you know, and mm -hmm. I saw it from a business pr perspective and I said, I can make some money just putting out the just collabs and not having to travel tour or do anything like that because I have these these other things that I'm doing as well. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do it. You know, I decided to uh, you know um, uh, sell my my ideas and and my uh, and everything I wanted to do with the music and and showcase my the collabs I had and and yeah. I was putting together and and there was a label that loved it and I said let's let's do it. You know, I support you and. And, and so far it's been great, man. I was surprised, man. I was surprised I was, you know, getting the love that I was getting. I thought I was going to be like, man, what the hell are you? I mean, you got those, you get those people. Cause I yeah. understand, you know, seeing me from, you know, a basketball player and so many, so many years dedicated, you know, dedicating yourself to a craft and then, you know, putting yourself in another a different light. It's just a different transition, especially yeah. being an entertainer, you know? So I can see people seeing like, like, well, what are you doing? I got my, my boys being like, they always, you know, that's all I was gonna uh, ask. Like, I'm, I'm sure, like, hard time. I'm sure, like, your teammates or like, I'm sure there's like, I'm, I'm sure, I don't know if you were like in a locker room, like you singing in the locker room where you do whatever. So I'm sure. No, like, no, that wasn't yeah, me at all. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I'm sure, like, when you put the single out, I mean, the people seeing the success you have now, I'm sure, like, there's probably teammates, probably people hitting you up, yeah. like, like, yo, where did all this come from? And like, like, yeah, yeah. like, what was the there reaction was no, from? What was the, what was the was reaction no. from people? Oh man, my teammates always give me a hard time. You know how yeah. it, how that is in the locker yeah. room. Um, but um, but for the most part, they show me love too. They would be yeah. recording themselves in the car. They show it. They they they'll tag me on it. Yeah. Or you know, or they'll tax me. But you know, it's 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 all love, man. I I, I enjoy doing it. Like I said, I you know, doing it from the business perspective. You know, it, it's it has worked out. So. Um, and it's still working on a, you know, I'm working on an album now just to yeah. kind of close that that stage of in my life, you know, and, and move on to other things. But it has opened doors, man. It has opened uh, doors for me. I was recently in in uh, Thailand shooting a movie. Um, I was contacted by, yeah, by this, uh, you know, production company, a, a cast director from Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks to the music, you know, a director for uh, something about Mary and Dumb and Dumber, you yeah. know, Peter Fair, Peter Fairley, the Fairley That's brothers, dope. they they saw the first song I, I put out. They saw the music video. They're from Boston, uh -huh. and uh, and they said, "Man, we want them in our in our movie." Uh, so they contacted me, and I, I came back from 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 uh, Thailand. I was over there for like two months shooting a movie, one of their That's movies. It's supposed to come out this year. That's love. So yeah, hooping. So you got this. You got the singing, <laughs> <laughs> reggae toe. Now we go. Now we got yeah. the acting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, triple threat. <laughs> man, yeah, triple threat, man. You, you really, yeah, yeah. really are a legend. I, I, 
question I have before we get into the, the, the funny questions. You have you have a teenage daughter, right? I think she's if I'm mistaken, 16, yeah, 17. Or 16, yeah. 16. So so how does she react to this? Because you know, at 16, like oh, your, your pop, yeah. your you already know, you already know. <laughs> so you I'm sure I don't know if her friends is playing the music or you know, she sees you they, on YouTube they, or yeah, they, they do you it. Got the song. Like, how is she feeling? Like she, like what? <laughs> they, they do it to bother her. They do it yeah. to bother her. They be playing, yeah, they be playing the song, they be all singing and she be like this, she be like running away, like she she, you know, you know, the typical teenager, like yeah, yeah. a shame of a shame of her dad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you like, but, oh, uh, I'm cool. Like, you don't know, like I'm really, I'm that guy. I'm yeah. You get to the crib, she like, nah, cut that off, man. Cut that yeah. off, cut that off, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it, it's all love, it. It's all they know I'm I'm passionate. Yeah, yeah. I love it. It, it you know, it, it it keeps my mind, you know, uh busy and, and uh just you know, I'm now I'm retired, you know, I go play golf. I'm, Every weekend at this this time of year, every weekend we have tournaments. Yesterday we were just in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. The weekend before last, we were in Jacksonville and they played a club volleyball tournament. Yeah, I seen that. Congratulations. To club to team. You. Congratulations. Thank to you. I seen that. I seen that too. Thank you. So you know, it's it's my time. This this is time for me to push them. You know, and and uh, uh, hopefully, you know, uh, one day they can play college and. And look back at all the sacrifices, you know, that mm. us as parents make for them, as well as my dad and my mom made for me. So um, it's just beautiful, man. So, you know, I'm, I'm constantly preaching to them, you know, the hard work and the discipline. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, with the music, you know, they they, they sometimes, you know, when they, especially when they're with their friends, it's just sometimes <laughs> I'll be doing that. So I'll yeah. be doing that. She's with her friends. Just, I'll be pulling up with the, I put the windows down, put my music. I'm like, come on, dad. Like, <laughs> yeah, but it, it's fun. It's fun, man. They love it. That's love, man. That's love. I'm, I'm going to give you a couple of quick hitter questions before we get out of here um, and let you go. Um, I'm not sure if you you're, you're going to tour, if you're performing yet. But the question I have is, in the future, you do perform. What do you think is going to be, give you that, I guess you could say that adrenaline rush, or what's going to be, what are you going to be more nervous for? Performing in front of 20,000 people, your, your hit song, or playing in the NBA Finals Game 1? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I think performing because it's something that I'm not I'm not used to. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. basketball was always like second nature. You know, yeah. um, you get a little nervous because you you know you went to finals and preparing and you want you know you want to do good and you know there's millions of people watching. But then after the first minute, you're already you know you're already into with the game. You know, uh, um, but performing, you know, I have to make sure I hit a note and yeah. you know have to make sure, you know, I'm doing it the right way. And it's, it's something that is just new to me. I've never done, you know, other than freaking talent shows at school mm -hmm. when I was in high school. But, um, and then all eyes would be on me, not on the team, you know, because, right. and and I know a lot of people are going to want to see, okay, let's see how Carlos Oreo performs. So yeah. uh, it'll be a little, little nerve wracking, I, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be dope, man. Like, I've really yeah. I, I seen the videos, man, so I know it's going to be dope. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to act like I know what I'm doing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> now, you, 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 I read a lot of, a lot about your kind of music, uh, what you listen to. You know, like you said, you're a fan of hip-hop, reggae song. You say, you know, even, even some other artists outside. If you had one dream collaboration, somebody that you want to get, you know, on your album that's upcoming, just in general, doesn't have to be reggaeton, just somebody that, you know, that you would want to get, who would that one person be? Oh. Uh, uh, urban, like Spanish. I mean, anybody, anybody, anybody. I mean, I would, I would say, I don't know, somebody like Drake, I don't know, I guess, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Drake is somebody, an artist that I can listen to like every day. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not like he has a couple of good songs and that's it. He has, you know, a good playlist that I can, you know, uh, I don't get bored listening yeah, to Drake. Yeah. That'd be dope. That'd be dope. Now, yeah, that'll be dope. We talked about a few last last couple of basketball things. Um, talked about Coach Adamon. You know, he's considered, you know, one of the best coaches, but also one of the biggest characters, you know, here in, you know, here in, uh, here in EuroLeague. Um, just talk about him a little bit, you know, just kind of what he's kind of meant to, meant to your career and just, you know, just like, you know, you said your, your admiration for him. Yeah, well, you know, Altima was it's one of those guys that, you know, I had to um, get accustomed to and, and, and get used to his way of coaching and, mm -hmm. and uh, his way of how he runs the team and his, his message delivery and his energy was just different, you know, from, uh, from the moment I stepped, you know, uh, foot in, in, in Turkey. Um, 
he's just his his way of the highway, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's he's very blunt. He's very honest. Um, and you, you you if you know I got the opportunity to play for him for so many years, and you know at the beginning it was just, it was just tough. But then I knew, you know, he was coming from a place of just winning and and just wanting everybody to be on the same page and play the hard the right way, and play hard, and that's all you can ask, you know, uh, for you know, and, and when you're trying to win a, a game and winning championships, and he's a winner, so absolutely, you know, you know, and you have these these mentalities sometimes of, of players that you know I'm gonna go to Europe. Uh, just to put up numbers, you know, and mm-hmm. those, those, not, those players don't really fit with his coaching style, mm-hmm. you know, and, and with a lot of coaching in Europe. And, um, and it, it's, it's something that, you know, it took me a while, but um, I have nothing but great respect for, for Atoma, man, you know, and to this day, he asked me to come work with him mm-hmm. in, in numerous occasions. I really thought about going to Europe and being a part of his staff because mm-hmm. that's how much I respect him and, and believe in him. So, um, who knows in the future, man? Uh, maybe, I maybe I, you know, I've always wanted to coach, to be honest, yeah. Kyle, but I've always felt that I don't have the patience for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but maybe, maybe, you know, in the future, I'll give myself a chance of coaching one or two seasons to see how it goes. And if, if I'm successful, who knows? Maybe that there's a career there. But um, I learned so much from so many good coaches, mm-hmm. you know, and, and me playing the position that I played, I feel like I was a coach on the floor every time, you know, decision making and all that stuff. But um, who knows? And, and, and you know, and, and as far as Atom, my man, you know, he continues to prove that he can win at any level. So uh, I know he's gained a lot of respect from from everyone, not only in Turkey, but everybody in Europe. So definitely. much love to him, man. Definitely, definitely. Man. Last two questions before I get you out of here. We talked about your NBA teammates and, you know, the LeBrons and the Carmelones and AKs and all that. But who is your favorite Euroleague teammate? I know you played with my guy, uh, Pops. Dang. Uh, you played with, you know, just a bunch of different guys. So who would you yeah. Who would you say was your, your favorite? Dang, uh, Kyle, that's not a good question, Kyle. <laughs> I mean, for me, I always remember the pick and roll when you were Pops. That, like, you were Pops, like, coming off that pick and roll. In, in, uh, yeah. the seat you, you were in Sesco, right? You yeah, were in Sesco. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a, Damn, that was a deadly that was a deadly combination. But, yeah. Damn, you, bro. <laughs> put you on the spot. Yeah, man, they, they for sure listening too. Damn, <laughs> I, I, man, I respect Kyle. I'm sorry, but I can't answer that question. <laughs> that means you. That, that's man, that, good. That, that means you had a lot of good teammates. Then. That's a, that's a good. Yeah, that's a man, good. <laughs> David David Hawkins, man. Thanks, the Hawk. You know. Yeah. Um, man, he was a beast. He played yeah. in Milano too. Yeah, yeah. He played yeah. In Milano. He's yeah. a legend over there. Yeah, um, man, he's a, he's a, he's a legend. T- all my Turkish teammates, man. Israel too, you know, David yeah. Sharp, legend over there, yeah. Maccabi. Yeah. Um damn man. D Brown played with D Brown. So yeah. much energy, man. D yeah. Brown had so much energy. <laughs> yeah, man. Shout out to him. Man. And then, you know, I, pl- I played with great teammates over there too, you know, in Barcelona as well. But yeah, I can't answer that, man. I'm sorry. No, man. I can't answer that, man. <laughs> <laughs> the last question we have is um Toughest opponent that you had while playing overseas? Oh, okay. Let me see. Let me see. Toughest opponent. Damn. As far as team or player, player, point guard, somebody that you you put up against. He was like, yo, this is this, it's gonna be, you know, I mean, we battling, we going back and forth. Damn, man. I want to say it's 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 between Diamantides and uh and uh, Kill Bill, bro. Yeah, it's I, between man, it's between it's between <laughs> one of them two, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's tough. Kill Bill was tough. Kill yeah, Kill Bill yeah. make you you know go to sleep at one o'clock in the morning exactly. thinking, damn, you know, have, have a tough one tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. You know, so. Exactly. Uh, I think it's Kill Bill, bro. <laughs> yeah, man, that's, not, that's, not, that's not bad at all. <laughs> well, so, man, I, I appreciate you, man. Um, man, I thank you for taking the time, man. This is this conversation has been fun, man. Like you said, we've been, you know, talking back and forth for a minute. You know, liking each other's pictures, commenting, and stuff like that. So, yeah, man, I'm sure. really, I'm really great that I, you know, that I had opportunity to, you know, sit down and talk to you, man. When I come to Miami, man, I'm a, 
I'm coming to the crib, man. I'm gonna text y'all. I need I need the hey, backyard man. crib, man. We gotta we gotta do the two on two, man. I gotta I gotta yeah, get my man. chance to Let's run the it. pick and roll with you, man. So <laughs> <laughs> anytime, brother. Anytime, man. Thank you for having me, man. Much respect. I've always looked up to you, you know, and your you. career. You're a true legend, bro. You're a Thank true you, legend. Sir. Feel Thank proud you. of everything you've accomplished, and, and I know you have many years to play. And um, when the time is right, you know that. You'll know that. So best Thank of luck you. this season, man, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. All the best to you and your family, man. Stay well. Stay safe, man. We'll, like I said, we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep talking very soon. For sure, man. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, brother. Subscribe to the Players Podcast to listen to more conversations with your favorite player about their careers and interests off the court. You can also check out Upple TV and GTM Family Productions on YouTube for more content. Thank you for listening.